next one is best and worst commentator. Good, solid, the best. I mean, Jim Ross is close behind, but, you know, we all tend to go back to where we were, you know. But Gordon, Gordon, a very interesting story. Gordon was found at a uh, racetrack in Florida in the, when Mike was just a small kid. He said, Dad, I like it because of Eddie owned that racetrack. He said, Dad, I love that guy's voice. And Eddie came to Gordon, and all his instructions were, is this is a sport treated like it. And Gordon never wavered. There was never any tongue-in-cheek bullshit. Gordon protected the business. He respected the business. To me, he was the best. But Jim Ross is very close. And the worst. Well, uh, before we go off Gordon Soley, I'll I'll sort of share something that I is you know much later yeah. on saw that I used to love, and I think this was in Florida, where it was Gordon Soley at a desk with just one microphone, and then the wrestler he would interview would sit down next to him, whether it was Boris Malenko or whoever it may be, and it seemed so less forced, even though they'd be like full of personality, the person they were interviewing, it seemed so less forced and so much more real and so much more warm and inviting and you can really sort of like you know put your teeth into it james i said to you when we before we went on the air about how you do your research you're the first person that ever told me that and that was my favorite interviews with him because it was one-on-one -on -one and i got to dick with gordon too like he would you know he was the uprighteous person and i'd look at him and he hit MVP told me this story that when he was a kid, he knew Gordon was evil. And I said, why? He said, because when you looked at Gordon's ring, he had a mason ring on. And you said, oh, I see you're a wise man from the East. And I would go down and I'd say, uh, Gordon would say, let's stay on, on you, Mr. Sullivan. And I could transgress and say, oh, by the way, I was just a small month ago in Princess Ananda said to say hello, I don't know what you're talking about. And he would, would fall for it perfectly. And what you s were talking about, the other thing was I watched him do it with Funk and Briscoe, Briscoe and Dickie Murdoch. I watched him do it with Don. He made that event real. Because I remember Dickie Murdoch saying, the reason why I'm going to be, be – uh, Jack Briscoe is, I, my fireman carries the best in the world and he can't block it and I'll be able to pin him. And I thought, pro wrestling, you talk about fireman carry. And Gordon came back with some quip. I mean, yeah, I love that segment that they did. Great. Mm. And uh, it would always end as uh, we're going to be at this arena uh, this day. Uh, there's plenty of parking adjacent. It's 555, five, five, whatever the number is. We hope to see you there. So no matter what said it, it was just like, and then you hit the pitch at the end, it was great. Yeah, yeah, he was very, very good. Uh, and the worst commentator? Uh, the Savolis, I love them, but Tommy Savoli looked like Jerry Lewis, exactly like him. And he talked like him. <laughs> and, you know, he'd be stuttering. Yeah, you got it. He'd be stuttering. <laughs> You're doing a hot angle and then the fact would be flying out of his mouth, but it was cheaper for them rather than getting an answer. 